Hi everyone, I've reached the end of my sixth semester of communication design and just finished my semester project. And to be specific, I've worked on a poster project within the typography course at the FH Aachen. Today I want to show you the final results of course, but also the whole creation process behind it. So you can follow me through all the ups and downs of one semester project. <laughs> and it's also pretty cool for me that I documented this whole process, because it will probably be the last time that I'm able to work like that on a project within my studies, before my internship semester and then finally my bachelor project which is a bit frightening and I'm also a little sad that I'm already that far into my studies but yeah so specifically the basis for this typography poster project was the so-called first things first manifesto written by a group of designers and first published in 1964 which calls for the return of a humanistic dimension in design it criticizes the mostly trivial production of mainstream advertising and advocates focusing design work on charitable and socially relevant tasks. The manifesto was revised in the year 2000 and still seems relevant today. So in Teams of Two we created a series of posters on socially relevant topics and visual experiments have also taken up an important space too. Due to the current online teaching, we took the chance to invite a variety of designers who gave us insights into their work and working methods every week in the form of online talks. I didn't start filming this video until the course had been running for a little over a month, I think, since we were still in the process of finding a subject we want to work on and also doing in-depth research on it. But to give you a good overview to start with, I will quickly show you the Notion board my team partner and I used to work remotely together. Since we had to choose a socially relevant topic for our poster series, we decided to address the subject of violence against women and to concentrate on public spaces. More infos on that later in the video. Um, we first collected keywords that we associate with the overall subject and then deepened our research. We quickly realized how multi-layered our subject is and that's why we worked out different subtopics and saved the in-depth research on each of them here. In addition, we conducted a visual research on the one hand to posters that simply appeal to us visually and can serve us as inspiration but also research on posters that have been made in the past explicitly on our topic. In general, it's always an advantage to have a large visual vocabulary and to know what has already been created in the past and which graphic periods have existed in order to be able to build on that and develop new work. We also open up a collection of hands and mouths as illustrations because we thought about um, using them as a constant symbol in our posters, but we are not sure yet. Before going into the digital space, we were advised by our professor to make small analog designs first. Here you can see the results of my first draft attempts. Uh, but this process is actually not that easy for me because I sometimes have the typical fear of the blank space when it comes to posters. That's why I tried once again to revise and expand my first draft. The biggest challenge for me in this project is in doing justice to these multi-layered themes. A poster shouldn't just look fancy but it still has to attract attention and curiosity so that people want to actually take a closer look at it. On the other hand, you have to put the information on the poster in an understandable and compact way because you don't want to use large amounts of explanatory texts. But especially with such subject as ours, you want to do justice to them somehow, not to present the content too superficial or generalized. In addition, you want to encourage reflection and offer extra value. This means that you really have to be very clear about what you actually want to say and how you can communicate these complex and sometimes abstract matters in the best possible way. Thank you. 
due to the talks we have every week with the designers and studios I just mentioned at the beginning of the video, we only have the chance to discuss our concepts every other week with our professor and fellow students because we from the third year of study have to switch with the students from the second year of study. But that's totally fine, it's absolutely enough. Um, we've gotten good feedback on our latest drafts, but have been told that we still have to figure out what we really want to say and what means or visuals we want to use to communicate this. Our professor said that my draft with the reaching hand works pretty well already from her point of view, so we will develop that further for now. Although we have a typographic focus in our course, we are of course also allowed to illustrate or photograph, for example, if it serves our posters. So from now on we will be working out our concepts digitally. I absolutely have to mention that the process shown here is extremely shortened, since such design processes usually consist of small trial and error steps before everything is in the right place, the video would go on far too long if I showed every of these tiny steps. For this reason I have summarized the, I put it in quotes, milestones. However, these aren't final posters yet either. These first digital drafts will probably change and evolve over the next few weeks, at least I hope so. Um, and it's really likely that in the end they will look completely different than what you are seeing here. <laughs> Dann musst du aufhören. Okay, people, on a quick word, um, just editing this video, and it's obviously a lot later than what you're watching right now. And God, do I hate these drafts! Oh man, I really have to force myself to not eliminate every single evidence that these drafts actually existed, <laughs> to be a little dramatic. But oh god, I really don't I really don't like them. We slipped in this direction because of our visual research on the protest style and movement of the 60s and 70s, and there is nothing bad about that. But I don't like how we implemented it. Um, yeah, so it's a little hard for me to give those drafts so much screen time to say so and to not delete them. <laughs> But I'm telling myself that we are mostly here for the process and um, they are a part of it. We needed a step to get where we are now. Um, so yeah, I hope to please your eyes further with those beautiful drafts. <laughs> and if you're watching that right now, I behaved myself and not deleted them. So. Yeah, these drafts will be shown next Wednesday, which is May 19th, in our midterm presentation. This presentation is held not only to present our current status, but also to clarify for ourselves where the project should really go and on which aspects of a subject we want to focus. On the one hand, in this case, we should again briefly present our already narrowed down subject and also show our visual references and analyze what we are going to pick up from it. On the other hand, we should also, and this is of course the most important thing, <laughs> present our previous drafts. Here you can see how I try to phrase exactly these points and summarize them as a presentation. But unfortunately, I lack a bit of concentration today, as you may have noticed, 
but since I already started to summarize our subject and our research a few weeks ago, I had a good basis. Since we will only have 10 minutes for the presentation, my team partner helped me afterwards to shorten everything a bit, since it's sometimes a little difficult for me to be as short as possible. I'm going to have breakfast now. I'm probably going to sit here for the next three hours, probably four hours, let's be honest. <laughs> and I don't know when exactly my team partner and I are going to present. Every team has 10 minutes to present and then 10 additional minutes for discussions if needed. Yeah, it's going to be a long morning. <laughs> So the presentations are over, we needed about four hours, um, but there's always a lot to talk about and it's just to bring us further and it's really helpful actually. So um, yeah, I didn't record the actual presentation to update you, I will break it down for you and also tell you which feedback we got. Um, yeah. I'm a little exhausted right now and I have to rethink a lot of drafts. Um, yeah, but it's going to work out somehow. As I already told you, we had to narrow down our subject again, but I will skip that for now and will summarize it for you in the end, I think, when I will show you the final results. So let's jump right into our visual research. Protest design works best when it is direct and to the point with little possibility for misinterpretation. This is also a key aspect that we try to take to heart in our work. You can see this aspect very clearly in these posters that came out of the CRED Women's Workshop, um, where the intent was to make strong statements and convey urgent messages in a visual language that was clear, vivid and emotionally evocative. Works from the 1960s also often utilized a sense of community, outrage and us versus them, which is very evident in the poster text in these examples. What is also very interesting is that extremely many people who have no design background shaped the poster design of this era. The point was not to create a beautiful design object, but simply to convey a message. These works by Sister Carita Kent also originate from the late 1960s. We find them particularly exciting because of the extremely strong color combinations, the shapes, the printing technique and the overlays. The two works on the left found in a lecture from the BIPOC Design History series and on the right the two posters from Atelier Cookie we would like to keep as visual inspirations due to the also very striking color combinations and the exciting use of form and typography. As I already told you, of these designs we found that the one with the grasping hand worked best so far and these are the results where we found that the color combinations are working best. Following our visual references, we experimented especially with eye-catching color combinations and fonts. And a little fun fact, the headline font we used here is called Resistance, which we find is extremely fitting in relation to our subject. In general, we want to reach viewers emotionally with concrete demands on our posters and encourage them to reflect. What is especially important for us to say with all posters is that women deserve to feel safe and to be able to move freely. That's why we also try to represent this message with the slogan Reclaim these streets as a reappearing element on all posters and therefore also mark our posters as a series. Since violence is often either physical, for example with the hands, or performed verbally, we have considered working with hands and mouths as symbols. Here in this example it is mainly about the understanding of consent, again very eye-catching colors and typography. With the circular text in the background, we also intentionally play with readability. You have to look a little closer, but we have often found that it can also encourage viewers to decode the text and that there is a kind of reward effect when you've cracked the message or have understood it. This often makes it easier to remember the poster later on as well. 
And here my team partner digitalized one of my drafts and um, this one's working pretty well already, I think. And uh, the last one is an idea she had last night spontaneously, so she just made it to show the overall idea, but we're of course going to work on that. As for the feedback, I should mention at the beginning that we don't have to do what our professor says. She keeps reminding us all of that too because it's just her feedback and we can do whatever we want with it. In general though, I find that she always gives very good feedback and it helps my work in the most cases to progress. Although most of the time she doesn't necessarily tell you what exactly to do, most of the times she just pushes you accordingly in a specific direction but you still have to think about it by yourself and just keep working and experimenting. She liked the choice of font for this poster. It is a reminder of the 60s and 70s but still contemporary. But in fact she considers the illustration inappropriate in this context. In her opinion, it should be more flat, for example. Moreover, it would scream digital illustration like, look, I was made on the computer and not fit the visual references we have chosen. In Karita Ken's work, almost everything was printed with silkscreen and it was this look that gave it something special. You can, of course, mimic such a look digitally if you watch related tutorials, but she also said that maybe you don't need illustrations at all or it can be purely typographic like on the Reclaim These Streets poster to remind you of certain shapes. In our shoes she would remove everything that is now red on the poster and start all over. The same then applies to the poster with the hand of course and she wasn't a fan of the font choice there either. <laughs> I definitely see the point with the illustrations, but I'm not sure yet how I am going to solve this. I only started illustrating digitally about a year ago and developing a whole new style all of a sudden is not that easy. But I remain curious and the second last Reclaim the Streets draft already works well in her eyes. But yeah, we will definitely work the font itself and probably also the colors there. Um, yeah, I will keep you updated on our progress and we'll see you very soon. <laughs> That's Friday, um, the Friday after the midterm presentation. I was just editing a video and a vi the video you're watching right now <laughs> and suddenly a idea popped up and I wanted to scribble it down so I can go to bed calmly, kind of. <laughs> yeah, just wanted to save it on paper. I'm not sure what this is, I'm just going to show you. So yeah, this is absolute trash. I just wanted to try something. I don't know if it's going to work when I try it out digitally, um, but I wanted to make a reference to the poster draft we already showed uh, in the midterm presentation, um, the one with the huge Reclaim the Street slogan. And because our professor told us that maybe we don't have to use a literal hand illustration, I tried to do it typographically, but I don't know. I mean, I have to try it digitally. It will look absolutely different than this quick sketch. As I told you, I just wanted to save it and update you. Yeah, I'm a little stressed to be honest, because as I told you, we have Friday and uh, next Wednesday, we are going to talk to our professor again, and then we have to show something new. And I have a lot to do on this weekend, especially because I have to move in about one month and a half for my internship semester. And uh, yeah, there's so much to do and to organize. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I will go to bed in a few and just wanted to save this. Yeah, we will see. Okay guys, as I said before, I had a lot of organizational stuff to do in the last days. I applied for apartments and I'm also working in a side job. That's why I have only been able to work on our course documentation in the last few days. And today's Tuesday, so we have course meeting tomorrow. And since I had to work today, 
I only have the evening left to work on new drafts and I'm extremely exhausted today again and fear that it doesn't make sense to try to come up with new ideas today and things like that can always happen so we have the possibility to say in a course that we can't show anything you can't produce ideas like a machine <laughs> but i don't think it's a good idea in this case because we just started with the digital designs and going from analog to digital and working out the visual and textual ideas in more detail is usually a very difficult phase if not the most difficult and for this reason I don't want us to then have to work into the blue for another two weeks before we can get feedback again so I'm really glad that my team partner and I pushed through and managed to make some new drafts at least and yeah we got some really really helpful feedback um, our professor said that we had already made some big choices in terms of our visual elements for example, the vibrant colors, typography that positions itself in space, such as in the Reclaim the Streets design, where the distorted type reminds us of streets, and our thematic breakdown across the four posters itself. Our main message is Reclaim the Streets and that we want women to feel safe on the streets again. So she advised us that maybe we could make Reclaim the Streets bigger on each of the four posters, and visually keep the city and the streets theme so that when we are done that our four posters really look like a series. The way we divided the subtopics on the posters seems to make sense in her eyes but we and most of the other teams should work it out again and bring it to the next meeting so we can talk about it because what will be written on a poster will determine how it will be designed and therefore it is important that we make concrete decisions now and see if the contents are also understandable for others. Our professor thinks that everything we have done so far is promising, but since we are in this difficult phase of the project, we need to experiment more and decide what we want to focus on visually. The visual experiment was also planned for the course from the beginning and in order to get the space for it we only need to design four posters including the course documentation this semester for our final submission so we've got the time to do that but you always feel a little nervous especially in this project phase because you feel a little bit stuck and you don't know exactly where you are gonna be going <laughs> and uh, it's a bit frightening yeah, but, but we are going to make it somehow. <laughs> Hello, it's me again for another update. I had a huge creative block in the last three days and then I went back to our midterm presentation and realized I really don't like the majority of our drafts we made so far and that I'm probably going to throw a lot of things overboard. Not our main idea and our topic itself, uh, what will be written on the posters itself would stay the same. But I mean especially our usage of color. Uh, we had our reasons to go that colorful way, especially because of our research on the protest movement and the protest style of the 60s and 70s. But I don't like how we implemented it. So yeah, I think this draft, oh god, this draft is working so far. We obviously have to work on that digitally, but um, the main idea is working out, I think. Um, but yeah, I scribbled down some new drafts, um, nothing presentable just for me to remember and also wrote down again what will be written on the four posters itself. Uh, yeah, and now I hope that I'm able to manage to bring something on paper digitally and um, I will let you know how it goes. So it's been two weeks since I last talked to you, um, especially because it's been a ride. 
as you can maybe tell from the massive dark circles under my eyes, um, especially due to the hunt for a flat in Berlin. I don't think that I have to say any more about that because it's absolutely crazy and I think I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just going to cry when I finally found a flat in a not so distant future hopefully. Uh, yeah, but you're not here for that. You don't want want to hear me complain. <laughs> Um, but I still managed to make some new drafts in the last two weeks and I think I successfully managed to go in a, another direction and to try some new things. I still kept the aspect of typography in relation to urban spaces and we are going to keep that definitely. But I left the color. It's just black and white for now and if we want to change that we can do that last minute before printing. Um, that's no problem, but for now we just left it like that um, because we wanted to focus not so much on the color compositions and stuff and more on the typography itself and to yeah to communicate the urban spaces visually with our shapes and the typography. Um, yeah, so let me show you the fruits of my work <laughs> and uh, yeah, also which feedback we got and um, let's jump right into it. Okay, as I already told you, we wanted to make our poster text uh, clear again and uh, we did that. We are going to make some little changes, but that's not that important. Yeah, these are some of my drafts. Um, I'm just going through them a little faster because the overview at the end is the most interesting, I think. These are my team partner's drafts and these two. And this is the overview. Um, this was especially helpful because these posters will be the size of, I don't know how, it, how it's pronounced in English, but it's Dean A0. Uh, it's, it's huge, it's really huge. And when you make them this small, you can see exactly which one catches your eye first, which one works better than another poster and that was quite helpful to bring to the course and to get feedback. And our professor said that she liked um, that draft most, this one, that one. To my surprise, I really, really don't like this one. I um, looked at the public theater from Paula Scher. It was a recommendation from our professor to look at that. So I tried to work with that, but I don't like it as much. But in her eyes, it has a visual power and it's one of those which caught her eye first. So yeah, okay. <laughs> um, then this one. So yeah, the next steps are that we are going to focus on our favorite drafts and the drafts we think work the best. And we also exchanged our Illustrator files so we can work on the drafts of the other person. And we hope that this is going to bring us further, that we have the chance to work on, on another draft. Yeah, so as always, I will keep you updated. Okay, nothing about the project. I just have to tell you that I finally signed a rental contract. <laughs> I'm so relieved about that and now I have more space in my head for the creative process for the project and stuff and I'm happy and relieved and I just wanted to let you know. Hi, it's been a while. The last time I've talked to you has been a few weeks ago and now we've reached the end of the semester. But showing more in-between steps wouldn't have added any value at this point since we just decided which of our posters work best together based on the last designs you saw. And after that it was all about fine-tuning and we also tried out different color combinations again. So I think it wouldn't have been that interesting to watch and surely this video is going to be long enough. <laughs> As you may have noticed, I've been very overly critical all the time about our posters. I don't know what it was. I mean, I know it's a habit of mine that I'm pretty self-critical, but it's never been 
that much when it came to a semester project. Maybe because posters are not that easy for me and I like practice and that's the reason why I've been even more critical. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We've always gotten much, much better feedback than expected. And sometimes when you're so deep into a project and have already seen enough of it, you have to take a step back to see what you've actually already accomplished. And yeah, now I am pretty content with what we've done and I'm very happy that our final presentation went well. And since we still can't organize a semester exhibition due to obvious reasons, we are trying to set up an exhibition in Aachen. And in this way, our posters can have an actual presence in the public space and we are finally able to see them in a huge printed format. Please excuse my scratchy voice, I've caught a cold. Um, as I said before, our final presentation went well and we received very good feedback on our project. We were especially happy that our professor called our presentation and the project in general high quality and professional. But all teams projects turned out super well and our professor was also very enthusiastic about the course in general because this is the first time she has designed this course the way it was and she's very excited that it worked so well and that all the teams were super engaged. Just before the deadline we all had another chance to send our drafts to our course chat and everyone gave feedback to everyone. That was a great dynamic and normally of course that happens in person at the university but the semester it wasn't possible again. Since you were able to follow the entire design process, I will now, as promised, simply tell you something about the subject with which we dealt for the project. So for this project, we addressed the issue of violence against women and focused on public spaces. The subject is pretty multi-layered, as I already mentioned in the beginning of the video, which is why we included several subtopics. In particular, the very recent Reclaim the Streets debate is one of the debates that was particularly important to us. Reclaim the Streets is about the fact that women do not feel safe, especially on their way home at night. For this reason, we also deal with rape, the understanding of consent and sexual harassment, for example in forms such as catcalling. This is a form of verbal sexual harassment when men make inappropriate remarks to women in public spaces or whistle at them. Femicides are also the subject of our work as numerous women are still killed every year on the basis of their gender. However, femicide also includes murders that occur as a result of a man's rejected advances or a breakup against her partner's will. For fear of possible consequences, many women are even afraid to say no in the first place and thus reject a man. As a result, the so-called victim blaming can arise and in this case the blame is placed on the actual victim of the often also sexualized violence. From our point of view, these problems are rooted in the cultural influences and norms to which we are all exposed since childhood. For example, our gender roles and the way we define masculinity. We think it is important to redefine many of these values and to encourage them. This concerns not only the value of women and girls as human beings with equal rights, but also the value of boys and men within relationships, family relationships and society in general. Their value should not be in demonstrating strength, being providers or protectors, but in their ability to have healthy, communicative and compassionate relationships with others, for example. In our eyes, women deserve to feel safe and be able to move freely. We hope to at least give a small push in the right direction with our posters in which we create awareness for these issues and encourage people to think for a change. So, this is going to be it for today. I've never worked on a vlog over such a long period of time or documented a project in this way, but it was very interesting for me and I had a lot of fun creating this video. If you've 
actually watched the video this far. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around and joining me. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day and I hope to see you in the next video. <laughs> Goodbye.